On October the 11th, seven weeks after the A6 murder, Hanratty was arrested at the Stavonia Cafe in Blackpool. By the following morning, Superintendent Acott was in Blackpool to interrogate him. Hanratty was driven south to face Valerie's story on a critical identity parade. We stood in a line and Hanratty was brought in and he was told in our hearing that he could stand where he wanted to in the line and he had this extraordinary tension uh, the most tense human being I've ever seen in my life. It was absolutely electrifying. He had this very vivid coloured hair, which was very orangey, which was obviously dyed. There had been reports that police were hunting a man with dyed hair. On parade, only Hanratty had dyed hair. Valerie's story was brought in on a, like a trolley bed with a slightly sloping back. And then she was wheeled up and down and looked at everybody over and over again. The killer had a London accent. Miss Storey asked everyone to speak. Campaigners have always claimed that only Hanratty had a London accent. And although impressions can be false, my feeling was that she took 15 or 20 minutes before she identified him. Um, and that's about as much as I can remember. And she too was a very tense human being, which is pretty understandable. Superintendent Acott congratulated Valerie Storey. With this identification from the key witness, Acott was satisfied that he finally had his man. Jimmy just said, don't worry, Dad, this has got nothing to do with me. They'll find out in the end, not to worry, because he can't help worrying. James Hanratty was charged with the rape and attempted murder of Valerie Storey and with the murder of Michael Gregston. Please, Mum, don't let anything upset you because there is everything to look forward to. But you know I couldn't do a terrible thing like that. Though I am a bit of a crook, I wouldn't hurt a mouse. The Bedfordshire magistrates, fearing local prejudice, committed Hanratty for trial in London at the Old Bailey. But the Crown had its way. The case was returned to Bedford. Hanratty pleaded not guilty on all three counts. Press and public scrambled for seats when the trial opened on January the 22nd, 1962. It was the most celebrated murder trial of its time. The judge at Bedford Special Assize was Mr. Justice Gorman. Counsel for the Crown were Graham Swanick QC and his junior, Geoffrey Lane, who would become Lord Chief Justice. Their case against Hanratty was based on evidence of identification, evidence that would supposedly point to him as the killer in the Morris Minor. Before being abandoned in East London, the murder car had been seen by several witnesses. John Skillet had a near collision with the Morris Minor. He identified Hanratty as the driver. But his passenger, Edward Blackhall, better positioned, insisted it was not Hanratty. James Trower, a pedestrian, also identified Hanratty, despite having only a glimpse of the passing car and its driver. But the most dramatic testimony came from Valerie Storey, who was brought to court on a stretcher. She recalled the attacker saying, Call me Jim, and she identified Hanratty to the jury. Hanratty's barrister, Michael Sherrard, cross examined her and found her testimony unshakable. Valerie's story, the crucial witness, although she had only a fleeting glimpse of the face of the assailant 
in the headlights of an oncoming car, was nevertheless prepared to pledge her oath that she had identified Hanratty correctly. Of course Hanratty's the man. I was there, I saw him. Uh, there's no possible doubt whatsoever. Hanratty was guilty, beyond any doubt whatsoever. Story had no doubt whatsoever, while acknowledging that on the crucial parade Hanratty had stood out like a carrot in a bunch of bananas. But at another parade, she had picked out a wholly innocent RAF corporal and identified him as the A6 killer. Hanratty wasn't on that parade. I couldn't identify him. Um, I just tried to pick out somebody, I suppose, who I thought looked like him. I made a mistake. The man had nothing to do with the, with the case. It's just one of those things. This year, Numerous police papers relating to the case have been disclosed for the first time. Among them, the long hospital interview with Valerie Storey. It reveals that a full month before identifying Hanratty, she told Acott, I may not be able to pick him out. My memory of this man's face is fading. The jury never knew of these doubts. Then came a vital respect in which Hanratty did not resemble the wanted man. Valerie Storey had made it clear that the murderer knew little about cars or driving. In her original statements, she said, he wanted me to start the car for him. He didn't know where the gears were. The car cut out, so I started it up again. But Hanratty knew all about cars. Jimmy was a good driver. Well, I won't say excellent driver, but he was a very good driver. Actually, in the 50s, he taught me to drive. You know? I mean, he taught me how to use the gears. He taught me how to hold the car and the clutch. You know? So, I mean, that, to me. And, of course, he was a, a well, I wouldn't say a professional car thief, but they got evidence that he was stealing cars. Well, that's not, to me, is not someone who can't drive. I said this to the jury, twice she started the car for him, twice she had to explain how the gears of a Morris Minor worked, and where the reversing light was, and where the lights were, and so on. Does that sound like a car thief? Does that sound like somebody who runs around with a Jaguar motor car key in his pocket? Does that sound like somebody who is an experienced car thief? I suggest it does not. And all the prosecution could say about that was, he was bluffing. He was giving them a blind to cover his tracks. But can that really have been so, when it was his intention to pump eight or ten bullets into that girl and leave her dead? <laughs>